Should we use analogies? Well, the simple answer might be no, because nothing is completely like God. Uh, God and his character, one God, three persons, is innately mysterious because he is God and we are creatures. So there's no analogy that solves the mystery of the Trinity. On the other hand, it's also true that in the Bible, God reveals himself clearly that, uh, as Jesus says, no one knows who the, the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom he chooses to reveal him. So you see both the Father and the Son and, of course, the Holy Spirit involved in teaching us and opening our eyes to see who God is. So we do come to know God, and we come to know each person of the Trinity as a distinct person. Each person of the Trinity is mysterious because he is fully God. Each person of the, of the Trinity becomes known to us through God teaching us and acting on us through his work of redemption. Uh, the trouble with using analogies is that many people have been tempted to solve the mystery, to dissolve the mystery. So one bad analogy is the analogy of a triangle which has three uh, vertices, three uh, angles, and only one triangle. Uh, so what's the matter with that? Because each of the angles is only a part of the triangle. God is not three parts. He's one God. Each of the persons is fully God, not just a part of God. So that analogy doesn't work. Many other analogies that people have used are inadequate because God is not like any creature. He is the creator. At the same time, the Bible does show us ways in which God speaks of his Trinitarian character that use analogies that derive from him. So one of these analogies is an analogy of communication. God is the original communicator. And the Father speaks the word eternally. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Now it's talking about the second person of the Trinity who is distinct from the Father. And then it says the word was God that affirms his full deity. Well, God's communication is in himself. He speaks the word in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is sometimes compared to the breath of God. Ezekiel 37 is one place. So there you have an original speaking an original communication which is mysterious to us between the persons of the Trinity involving all three persons. And then, of course, we are created in God's image. And so we, as human beings, can speak words carried by breath to our neighbors. So that's an analogy that depends on and originates in God himself. The difference is we're not climbing up to God to try to use a created analogy to understand him on our own. But God is coming down to us and showing by his own speech what kind of God he is. Second analogy is the analogy of the family or analogy of love. The very terms father and son we understand in relationship to human fathers and sons. Now it's important to see again that we're not climbing up to God and inventing things on our own initiative. But God is the original father. When he made human fathers, they're really the copy of his original fatherhood. And the eternal son is the original son that is being imitated on the created level. Now, the Holy Spirit comes into the picture because in John 3.35, it says the Father loves the Son and is, showing, is given all things into his hand, and it's speaking about the gift of the Holy Spirit in particular. So the love of God between the Father and the Son is expressed in the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's the primacy there is the family analogy of a father and son and love between them. But the, the original family, you might say, is the family of God, of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And human families are derivative. The third analogy I draw attention to 
is the analogy of reflections or images. The Son of God is also called the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1.15, in a context before creation even. And the Holy Spirit has a so close connection with the glory of God that shows the character of God. So there, in the process of God appearing and showing himself to people, there is an analogy that derives from the Trinitarian character of God. Now, these analogies in turn, communication analogy, family analogy, and uh, reflection analogy, uh, those three have in turn many reflections uh, as God interacts with the world. So in a sense, you can say there are many analogies, but they're all partial. They all remain on the level of saying God is God. He, he understands himself perfectly. We are creatures. We understand him really, but not completely. 